It's something you can't buy, use, or grow in the gem state. We're talking about marijuana. If you're caught with it, you're looking at a big fine and possibly jail time. But just 30 miles west of the Idaho-Oregon border, pot is big business. This morning, Gretchen Parsons taking us inside a legal marijuana farm in eastern Oregon. She gives us a behind-the-scenes look at the process of making and selling pot. Idaho is virtually surrounded by states that have legal marijuana in some form or another. So we traveled to Huntington, Oregon. That's the closest place to Boise where pot is being legally grown and sold to get an inside look at this expanding industry. Not many people knew much about pot. Jim Spikerman grew his first pot plant more than 50 years ago. Fast forward quite a few years and pot became legal. I was all of a sudden not a criminal. I was in demand. Now doing it legally, 68-year-old Spikerman has a lifetime of experience growing pot. During the 60s, a lot of people smoked pot, and I had it in my mind, why not grow a pot? So a few of my friends and I started in an old orange grove in the back of uh, Tustin, California. From surfer to painter to family man, the marijuana business has always been a constant in Spikerman's life. Everybody has different cloning techniques. It's his unique experience that helped land him the job of head grower at Burnt River Farms in Huntington. We're a completely organic operation around here. Just an hour and a half drive from Idaho's capital city, business is booming at this farm in eastern Oregon. It's really full circle here from the beginning of the crop to the finished retail ready product at the end. Sean McKay is the CEO of Burnt River Farms. We plant several thousand plants by hand. We tend to those plants all year by hand, manicuring them, trimming them, pruning them. After Oregon legalized recreational marijuana, Sean McKay left his cushy government job as a rangeland ecologist and crop scientist to launch this operation. I saw this as a once in a lifetime opportunity. I figured government work would always be there for me. McKay's crop gets its start here as seedlings in the greenhouse nursery. Here's a salmon river. We grow that for our locals. Here's some Samoa cookies, a Bubba Kush. While some of the plants thrive indoors, other strains are moved outdoors into this field, which is bare now but lush during the summer. This massive fence protects the crop from Huntington's hungry deer population. There's many pests. Everything loves it, so <laughs> you have to really learn to uh, combat the things that are after it, besides the general public. To keep those other pests away, Burnt River Farms has a state-of-the-art security system above and beyond what's required by Oregon law. I think there's somewhere around 50 cameras here that are all fiber optic cameras, motion sensor, night vision. That's more security than a traditional farm, but McKay says his growing operation is guided as much by agricultural principles as any other farm. We try to take those common agricultural practices of irrigation and soil management and pest management and apply that to cannabis production. It's just a process of learning, trial and error, and over the years it's been keenly developed into a highly technical trade. As soon as the plants are about eight inches tall, they receive a metric ID tag, and that tag will follow that plant all the way through retail-ready product. Once this crop leaves the soil, the process is far from over. Burnt River Farm produces marijuana gummies, oil, hash, and shatter all here on site. Very little of what we produce here makes it to the market as a raw cannabis product. The finished product is distributed all throughout Oregon and right down the street in Huntington. Pot is big business in the tiny town of Huntington where there's always a steady stream of cars heading into town, many with Idaho plates. Marijuana that crosses the border into Idaho is a criminal offense, but Idaho State Police says there's been no increase in marijuana citations since pot shops opened in Oregon. In fact, there's been a decrease of people getting pulled over and caught by ISP with pot in Ada, Canyon, and Payette counties. Regardless of where the plant is going, marijuana money has been a boon for the sleepy town. We go back and forth between the, the two dispensaries in the school as the largest employer here in town. Burnt River Farms employs a minimum of 25 people year-round and brings in dozens more for harvest season. 
This is one of the most labor intensive crops that you will ever come across. It's very hands on. There's very little machinery that's designed to accommodate our crop. While it's big business in Huntington, residents have been divided over pots since the dispensaries first popped up. It's wrong. It's wrong what they've done. They've come and destroyed our town, destroyed a lot of people's feelings. There's been a lot of hard feelings between people that have been born here and raised here. It's still somewhat divided. But based on the growing acceptance of marijuana, the growers at Burnt River Farms are willing to bet it's only a matter of time before the rest of the nation relaxes its pot laws. I, I think it's on its way. The cat's out of the bag. and. It'll be legal in every state eventually. In Eastern Oregon, Gretchen Parsons, Idaho's News Channel 7. And if you want to read more about marijuana laws here in Idaho, just check out our breakdown. We have it all there for you at KTVB.com.